Hey guys, Rex here. We're taking a look at the Fab Defense Wraps C Rapid Adjustment Precision Buttstock. I got this deal from OpticsPlanet.com. This is made for the AR platform, AR15, AR10. It can work on either a commercial size buffer tube or mil spec. It's adjustable for that. But this is a buttstock that provides you a lot of ergonomic adjustment. You have an adjustable cheek piece as well as an adjustable length of pull that features a memory feature. So when you pull the tab down and unlock it, it'll pop back to where you set the memory. This is kind of an interesting design. I was looking for something a lot of people are asking about. Hey Rex, do you know any precision butt stock for the AR that have really good ergonomic adjustments for shooting with a scope? Some guys have scopes that are situated too high for their face and for their, for their type of ergonomics. So I thought I'd take a look at this thing. The Rap C AR-15 collapsible stock is actually made from fiberglass reinforced polymer. Pretty tough, it's supposed to work in pretty much any of your weather conditions. I do know that in, in hot weather, you're not gonna have a lot of problems with this kind of material. We were able to get it down to about negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit here a couple days ago to test and see how all the mechanisms would work to see if it would still be adjustable in extreme cold weather. And to our surprise, it actually functioned fine. The unlocking mechanism, the memory on the length of pull adjustment, that all worked as it did in normal weather, even when it was pretty well coated in snow and ice. Does have a rubber butt pad, does have an integrated cheek rest and adjustable length of pull. It has its own patent pending one latch system. There's just a single latch that locks both the length of pull and the cheek rest height with just one lever it can be configured for either right or left-handed shooters. The length of pull memory feature, once you have the adjustable butt pad set, it will spring out at the same length every time if you simply tighten the LOP memory wheel. It's on the very bottom of the toe of the stock. It's recessed into the stock to where it's not gonna just turn on you without trying to get at it. You actually have to consciously turn the wheel and, and try to index that wheel with your finger. It's not gonna come loose on accident. Once you get that set, once you unlock the latch, the spring will pop out your butt stock to its memorized length of pull. When you lock down the latch again, it's locked in place. It actually does lock it pretty firm. We tested it, we mortared the rifle about a dozen times on the ground, pretty hard, and we didn't get it to loosen up or break or have any kind of malfunctions. So the durability on the mechanisms, although the latching mechanism itself, when it's unlatched, there is some looseness to it. That was something we were curious if we could break off as well. We give that a little strike, palm strike from various angles to see if that would snap off, particularly in the extreme cold weather when stuff gets a little more brittle and it held in place. So the stock overall and the different mechanisms are all pretty darn tough in a variety of weather conditions. The length of pull adjustment extension can go out to 32 millimeters or about one and a quarter inches, a little over one and a quarter inches. The integrated cheek rest adjustment range is about 42 millimeters or 1.65 inches. There's a concealed Picatinny rail at the bottom of the stock that you can use for a monopod and it does have a slip-on cover. The slip-on cover is not going to fall off on accident. You have to consciously get in there and remove that, which I think is a good thing when you're moving around. The RAPC does include a retention bolt for determining the optimal fit on either a mil spec or commercial spec carbine buffer tube. So you simply loosen up the Allen key up on the front before you install it and you slip it over under your buffer tube like you would with any M4 type buttstock. Once it's on there, you can tighten that to your preference. The installation of the buttstock is pretty easy. You don't need a gunsmith. You don't need to be a rocket scientist to figure it out. Those are the basic features. The thing is of pretty darn good quality. It does function as advertised. Now we're gonna go ahead and give you our opinions on where we think this configuration would best be suited. Um, I was able to play with this quite a bit now, kind of get my opinion on how I think it would work for different applications. Um, right now I have the sling off of here. I mean, I'll have to explain that in a little bit, but uh, it's an interesting stock. I think it has a real sound place in a few different specific categories where I think it'd be really cool. And there's some other categories where I will give you my opinion on that as well, where you might wanna take very careful note of a few things to make sure you don't um, have a problem, okay? Uh, right off the bat, Quality construction's nice. 
I like it right now. It's uh, it's actually adjustable, right? So you can pull it out like a collapsible stock. It's got a different control here. So you got to push down. Most stocks, you grab it like this, and you move it. This one, you got to actually push down, which is a little different. It's a little weird if you're not used to that because you don't have the same kind of leverage in grabbage you would on the other stock where you're actually compressing it and you got a good firm grip that's straight on with the buffer tube this one when you're trying to open this now you got to pinch it from the sides and it kind of because you got a different angle that you're torquing on it if you're not used to it right so it's not like it's easy on the fly it's not the same we'll put it like that it's not as easy on the fly with the muscle memory that you have for a different kind of stock um now there are some times where it, the spring tension on this mechanism is different. It's not, you gotta make sure it's fully settled into the notch it's gotta be in, and then it snaps back into place. Sometimes if it's kind of, uh, let's see, if it's between or halfway in a notch, it'll kind of, uh, kind of do this, see that? And then between notches, so I need to, okay, now it fell into its notch, now it's in there, okay? So be aware of that, that's what's going on there. Uh, the way you install this right off the bat, we have a screw here for adjustment for a military or commercial tube, okay? Which is nice, because it's universal. So just like any other stock, you grab this collapsing mechanism here, you pull straight out. You don't just pull it out like this, pull straight out, then it comes off the back, right? Then you put it on, you loosen this screw all the way up, to give you enough room. And then you gotta, it's a snug fit, so you gotta kinda get the angle right, and get this on here, okay? And get this on here like so. Oh, let's see if you can see it. Okay, now it's not on yet. We have to lift this up to get the mechanism. Gosh darn it, are we still here? Oh, there we are, sorry. Get the mechanism like that. Okay, now we're in. Now we can lift this up, and it can go all the way back, and it's there. Okay, so we have our different positions there. Once it's on here, you wanna make sure it's not too tight, but you wanna make sure it's tight enough. It depends on what your application is. If you like it to be real super snug feeling, like if this, if you got a rear end of an AR on one of your bolt rifles, for example, um, you could snug that up pretty, pretty tight and it's not a big deal. On a fighting rifle type deal, I like to have it loose enough so we can make a quick adjustment, okay? Um, and this does have a little rattle can on it. It's a spray painted, so there's more texture to this than on other stuff. And you can adjust it though, that's a nice thing. The adjustment here, I probably will loosen this up a little bit if I'm gonna continue to use this stock on this weapon, okay? But uh, you loosen that up or tighten it up as to make sure it's the way you like it, okay? So there she is right there. Now on the wrap C stock, we have an adjustable butt pad. We have an adjustable cheek pad and we have a Picatinny rail section underneath here. This is just held on with friction right now. It's a little angry, so you gotta be careful. There it is. So we have a Picatinny section here, okay? There's monopods, there's all kinds of different stuff on there. This is pretty tight fit, so be careful putting it back on. Okay, so that's back on there. We have a memorization feature for the length of pull, which is this wheel here. So here's how it works. Um, before we get into how to adjust it, the overall feel of the stock, I like okay. Um, for a adjust, a adjustable stock with adjustable length of pull and adjustable cheek piece, when it's fully in its co fully collapsed compact um, position, there's not a lot of snag points. It's actually kind of smooth. Um, even this lever here, you kind of have to get under there. I don't see this really snagging up on gear as bad as some of the other st stocks are going to be. So that's nice. So that when you have this, and the sling is off now, but when you have this hung here and walking around all day and need to get up and deploy, right? Um, it's not gonna snag up. Now, once you get into position, it has a memory feature where you can do this and I'll show you how this works. So you take this, this is what they are calling the latch lever. So this steel comes down, 
See, now this is spring loaded. And now this can go up and down. So you can adjust from all the way up here. Like if you got a really high scope or if you're running this uh, on, like I said, a rifle, there's a lot of bolt action chassis that use like an AR rear end. You can get this a fair amount of adjustment. That's where I think this would probably be the handiest. Um, now when you're fully collapsed, dig this. Go ahead and lock it in. Make for sure you understand I can charge it if it's all the way up. But if it's in one of these intermediate positions, like maybe here, okay? You can't do an immediate action drill with the stock collapsed and the cheek riser up. Unless it's all the way up or all the way down, you can't really get in here to do that. Huge, huge thing to know. Huge thing to work in if you're gonna use this um, the guys who developed this, according to the box here, have a lot of um, military, uh, special forces, and SWAT experience. So in the right niche, that would be cool. But for your typical guys who are, man, on a, on a platform like this, like an AR, be aware of that deal. That's, like, that's a priority, is to be able to, in, in your sleep, even if something gets opened up and this moves for some reason, you don't want to impede your ability to get an immediate action drill in there, right? Um, now, even if it's up a little bit, pull it up a little bit, okay? And we lock this here. This, this is the position I actually like it in, okay? I like the buttstock kind of forward in the back. I actually pull it up like right around here. And we got the cheek riser here just a little bit up, okay? So when I get behind the weapon like this, I got a pretty good, I got a pretty darn crisp view of the entire optic all the way around, with just a little bit of the cheek coming up, okay? Um, which is cool. And in the fully extended position, I'm good. Now, if I'm coming over the top of it, like holding the rifle here, and I'm charging it like this, this uh, can impede your hand, I noticed, when I was trying to be fast. Um, so be mindful if this is up a little farther and you charge your rifle like the old school way, pulling it straight back, which is recommended for a lot of applications. Um, this kind of a stock is going to be problematic for that. If you're doing the old left hand charge, it's not going to be as much of a problem um, in this particular position. So be aware of that deal, okay? Um, to set... The memory, there's a memory wheel down here. So once you determine like where you want your buttstock to be adjusted, nice soft rubber grip here, which is nice for some things and less nice for other things, like particularly um, getting snagged on clothes or gear and stuff like that. Sometimes it's nice to have the hard plastic is nice in a lot of ways. This is nice for other applications like precision applications, stuff like that where um, like I could imagine if I was target shooting, that'd be nice. Or varmint shooting where I don't have to do like hair on fire, immediate action drills or I'll die type deal. If something on the stock, I forget to do um, my little new procedure for this, I'm not going to die because I couldn't charge the weapon again, right? So for those applications, I think it's totally viable, okay? Um what you're gonna do is you simply take this latch here, you open this up like so. Now, before you set the memory wheel, it's just gonna pop all the way open. So what you do is you find the spot you like. For this, it's one mechanism to, to do both. And then when you lock this one switch back down, it's locked in for both of them deals, okay? Well, when you lock the switch down, it's locked in for both. So now this is solid, this is solid. So one lever, does everything. So like I said before, I like this about here. I like it about right there, okay? And I actually like it on mine all the way forward, okay? So what we're gonna do is, let's say you didn't want it all the way forward, you wanted it about halfway like this. This is your position right here. You're gonna memorize where you're at, right about here, okay? In your cheek piece, you're gonna memorize that. Then you're gonna take it where it was at, make sure it was set. You can have look at it visually, mark it. Say that's the position that's just right for you. Lock it down and then turn your memory wheel 
clockwise from the perspective of looking straight down on it. At first, I was doing it by looking at it this way, which would be counterclockwise, and it will not set the memory for the length of pull here, okay? So we're gonna turn it clockwise, okay? From your perspective, to me, it looks counterclockwise. That would've been nice to know. <laughs> I was like, pretty sure it's from this angle. So I'm just turning this until it tightens up on this position here, okay? All right. You're not gonna accidentally turn this wheel. It is in this, it's in there, hidden away, okay? So now, when I go to um, pull the lever, I can fully collapse everything. So now we can uh, push the cheek piece down. We got this lever down. We can push the cheek piece down, push this forward to get in this most compact position, lock it back here like so. And when I want it to, when I want to deploy this thing, it's gonna memorize my special length of pull deal that I predetermined after I tighten that wheel. So I'm just going to release the latch here. See, it returned to where I set it. Kind of cool, huh? And then you just line, and then you gotta set this manually each time, okay? So there we are. Pull this up till it's about right. And then lock it back down and you're ready to roll. Probably. Okay. There she is, okay? This is loosening. You can see how it's coming out there, right? So the more I loosen this, the stock comes back. Whenever I find that sweet spot, I basically just lock this down and then tighten this back up. So that's my sweet spot right there. Tighten this up, okay? So now when I wanna put it back together, compact mode, I go like so, latch it down, compact mode, see? Now I can do all my actual normal stuff. I can make it compact like this. Now it's all slick and sleek and small, but if I wanna get into my really excellent super precision position, I just uh, deploy it wherever you wanna have it, like this, and pull this lever and it memorized right there. When I pulled that lever, it popped out and memorized it. And I'll set my cheek piece to kind of where I remember it's at. I would take a pen and write on here where it's gonna be, okay? It's kind of an added deal. So like maybe draw a line from here to here, whatever, you know? And then you just, once that's set to where you like it, lock it in right here. Now you have to adjust the screw to get, then you have to adjust the screw to redo that properly, okay? The idea is, uh, interesting idea. It's kind of cool. My opinions on the deal, I think this would be good for, like I said, target shooting. Uh, it'd be really good for some kind of chassis and bolt action where you got an AR rear end. It'd be nice for that. Um, on an AR, I want to prioritize for my applications the ability in any stock position, any stock position, to do an immediate action drill. Grab this, get it all the way past here. See, look, see it's coming over the top of there. So that's like, to me, super critical. Even if you can like pull this down, because now your immediate action drill, let's say this damn thing is up. Okay, pardon me. So we just have it up a little bit, right guys? And because I'm wearing a bunch of armor that day or a winter coat, I have to put the stock a little bit farther forward than when it's rearward. So I'm shooting, bam, bam, bam. Need to do an immediate action drill and grab it. It's hitting, grab over the top. Not working all that well, right? Or it's in its fully extended position. I can get it from this angle, but if I grab it from here, the 
cheek riser is impeding my ability to charge this weapon. Um, so if you're doing this in combination with some kind of side charging handle, that might work fine. But on the dog ears charging handle like this here, man, um, definitely something to consider. So I would not like this for like an emergency go-to type gun. But for a precision, a dedicated precision rifle, I think that's probably where the place would be for that. Do you like the slow motion Rambo, like gearing up? <laughs> then I zoom in. Okay, I'll try another one. Here, it's a square knob, but oh, yeah. we'll make it a... <laughs> Is that how that works? Yeah, it's exactly how it works. <laughs> Looks like it's so ragged. Oh, yeah, we're good. So, uh, the stock here, the Fab Defense, we got adjustable butt stock length. We have the cheek piece. And what rifle is this on right now? This is a custom homebrew. Homebrew. Proof barrel, fail zero, bolt carrier, Holosun, Vortex actually, only Vortex. Vortex! Hey, I, I know, it's just awesome. a magnifier, but it's actually really good. Yeah, they work good. And then a TLR, IR, and they have a good old X300. Okay, cool. Shoot stuff, man. What do you think, brother? This little space right here gets hung up on stuff, so it's, I don't think it's really meant to run and gun um, because it's getting up and down, but that could just be a training thing too. This little ledge, little notch right here, yep. gets caught on your charging handle. Even with it all the way down? Even with it all the way down. You can see it's all the way down. Okay. I do think that you could just sand that down a scooch and would be a hundred times better. Round that corner a little, huh? Yep, yep. So I just kind of went up charging. Do I have a magazine in there? I would just kind of have to pull up on the charging handle a bit. Or oh, you'd have to pull up on the charging handle to get over the top? Yeah, I had to like, yeah, do that. So, whatever. So and that I, is adjusted all the way down, right? Yep, it is. Yeah. You can okay. see it's all the way down. And then, but I, what I do love is I do love pulling it in the pocket of my shoulder like this. Yeah. Like it's just a really nice purchase. I can really control it. And it's, sure. It's, it's, it's nice. So for like a target rifle or varmint rifle where you're more static? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and that application, I think it's, I think it's pretty cool. And I like, I haven't used it over a bag yet, but I just, I know a bag would ride smooth, and you'd be able to move it around on a bag. There's nothing to get caught on it, mm -hmm. which is nice. Right on. Anything else you're thinking on that deal? Nope.